So this video is on uh, um, uniform circu circular motion and I'm going to introduce you to uniform circular motion and some of the terms associated with that. So let's start off. First, let's try to understand what is uniform circular motion, right? So here we have an object, right? Here an object which is moving along a circular path, right? O is the center of the circle and it is moving along a circular path which has got radius r. Now, if the speed of the object remains constant throughout, so constant speed. If the speed remains constant, then the object is said to be performing uniform circular motion. Right? The, the velocity will be variable because the direction of the speed is continuously changing. Right? Let us see how the speed the direction is continuously changing. Let us say the object is performing circular motion and it is at this particular location. When it is at this location, the direction of velocity is tangent at this particular point. So the direction of velocity will be something like this. So it is moving in this particular direction along this particular path. And when it reaches over here, for example, it is tangent at this particular path. So it is moving along this direction. So you can very clearly see that the direction of this speed keeps on changing and therefore we say velocity is variable because direction is changing even though the speed is constant. So uh, the magnitude of this uh, velocity will remain constant and therefore the length of these vectors would remain same. So this would be say for example magnitude would be v and it would be v over here and it would be v throughout the uniform circular motion. Right? So that is uniform circular motion. When an object moves with a constant speed and variable velocity, variable because of change of direction. Let us say we have an object at this particular location and let us call this as location P1. So that's location P1. This is, as I said, the center of the circle. And in time t, it moves to location P2. So let us say this is location P2. So the object reaches over here in time P2. So it has moved from P1 but P1 P2 and this distance P1 P2 is known as linear displacement is known as linear displacement or also known as arc length right arc length for small values of uh, theta right uh, the linear displacement would be P1 P2 right? and this is also known as arc length and it is denoted by s so linear displacement is s right? now when it moves from op1 right op1 right when it moves from p1 to p2 it completes or it turns through an angle theta let us say theta so this is the radius vector this is r right this is the radius vector so op1 op1 is the radius vector and it turns through an angle theta when the object moves from P1 to P2. And that is known as angular displacement. So I am introducing the first term, angular displacement. First term, angular displacement. It is theta, right? It is this theta. And what is it? The angle swept or angle turned by the, by the radius vector. Right. So the angle which this radius vector OP1 turns through, theta, is known as the angular displacement. And the unit that we have is uh, radians. Uh, let me write over here. The unit will be radians. Right. So angular displacement theta in radians is defined or is given by arc length upon radius. So this will be P1, P2 upon R, that is S upon R. And therefore, we get our first equation, theta is equal to S upon R. Theta is equal to S upon R, which in word is uh, arc length upon radius. And uh, uh, this particular uh, understanding of angular displacement is uh, because as S increases, uh, let me get it over, as S increases, theta would increase. So you can see theta and S are uh, directly proportional and similarly if r increases right if r would increase then theta would decrease for the same displacement for the same displacement theta would increase and that's why we come to this uh, 
definition of theta. Th that it, in other words, S and R. Once S and R get fixed up, theta gets fixed up, right? So once S is fixed up, right? So for let me draw it over here. Supposing this is S. Let us say this is length, arc length S. Once this I fix up, and I fix up radius. So I will have the radius. Say for example, this R. This is R and this is S. Once these two values are known, then I can join these two and I get theta. Therefore, theta is given by S upon R. And they are inversely proportional to, it's inversely proportional to R and directly proportional to S. That is how the definition of uh, angular displacement comes in. All right. So, we have looked at uh, angular displacement. The next term that I am going to introduce is angular velocity. And it is denoted by the symbol omega. Right? Angular velocity omega is angular displacement upon time. So this is, uh, this is uh, angular displacement is theta upon t. Therefore, omega is equal to theta by t. Yes, another term, omega is equal to theta by t. And the unit is uh, unit of omega is radians per second uh, because theta is radians and this time is in seconds so we get unit of omega as radians per second so i have introduced two terms angular velocity and angular displacement uh, the last thing that i want to mention in this uh, uh, video is about <coughs> uh, what happens when an object performs uh, one revolution right so let us see what happens when an object performs one revolution so if i have a circle over here this is the center of the circle and an object performs one and this is a radius r and when an object performs one rotation then in that case uh, in that case uh, s which is the arc length would be 2 pi r therefore theta would be s upon r which is 2 pi r by r which is 2 pi therefore for one complete revolution theta is equal to 2 pi radians right. now 2 pi radians therefore uh, would mean 360 degree rotation 360 degrees and therefore one radian if you do 360 divided by 2 pi that is 2 into 3.14 you will get approximately 57.3 degree right so one radian is 57.3 degree right so when i say that the angular displacement is one radian what i mean is actually the object has turned through an angle of 57.3 degree so this is another thing that we need to take note of right Okay, we're coming to the end of this video, and uh, we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at the the nature of angular velocity and angular displacement, right? So let us say this is an object which is uh, let us say this is an object which is moving in anticlockwise direction. This is the center of this. Yes. Right. Let us say it is moving in the anticlockwise direction. Right. In, th in that case, the direction of uh, angular velocity is decided by the right hand uh, screw rule. Let right. me write over here, right hand screw rule. Right. So, if I imagine this to be a disc which is rotating right, in the anticlockwise direction and let us say this is a threaded screw, then I can f I can see that if this rotates in the anticlockwise direction, it will come out of the page. It will come out of the page. The direction, right? The direction in which this disc will come out will be out of the page, and that is the direction of uh, omega, and of course theta also, angular displacement, right? Similarly, if the object is moving in a clockwise direction, right? so let us say it is moving in a clockwise direction. So this is an object, a circular disc kind of a thing, right? And it is moving in the clockwise direction. Now, if I imagine this disc to be rotating on a threaded screw, let us say this axis is a threaded screw, and if it rotates in the clockwise direction, right, you can see that the disc will go inside the page, and that direction is the direction of omega or 
theta and therefore omega and theta theta and omega are considered as uh, vector quantities vector quantities vector quantities and these are considered vector quantities for very small displacements right if the angular displacement is very small and thereby the angular velocity is very small then they are considered vector quantities for finite values when they have some larger value they are considered uh, they are considered they are given a scalar treatment right so for all practical purposes for our discussions we will treat them as scalar quantities and we will not look at the vector aspect of uh, theta and uh, omega but we should keep in mind that for smaller values of omega and theta they are vector quantities and the direction is uh, the direction is decided by the right hand screw rule uh, okay i think uh, for this video this is good enough and uh, i have uh, just introduced you to two two terms angular velocity and angular displacement in the next video on circular motion i'll introduce you to angular acceleration thank you